Welcome back everybody. In the previous video, we wrote this code to train a simple model in TensorFlow. In this video, we'll see how to train deeper models, how to regularize them, and how to visualize them in TensorBoard. Then we'll learn to work with checkpoints so that we can pause and continue training. First, let's add this model more layers. We can do this in a for loop. This code block will now repeat the dense layer followed by relu three times. We also need to move the input layer variable outside of the loop so that each one of these layers in this loop get their inputs from the previous block. To reduce the risk of overfitting, let's add a weight decay regularizer with an alpha value of 0 0.00001. We need to specify in which parts of the model we want to use this regularizer. We will regularize the weights in the hidden dense layers. Let's also add a dropout layer to further regularize this model. This layer will randomly drop out 20% of its inputs during training. Okay, let's run this model before we make any further changes. As you can see, it's kind of slow, and if you needed to stop it for some reason, we would lose all the training that had been done until that point. So we better save checkpoints every once in a while, and continue from there if we need to pause it for some reason. Besides, we need to save the model anyway, so that we can deploy it once the training is complete. Okay, I'm gonna cancel this right now, and modify the training code to load and save checkpoints. Okay, we'll load and save our checkpoints here. I'm gonna save the checkpoints under a directory called checkpoint in our working directory. You can put them somewhere else if you want. Then I'll create a saver, which we'll be using to save and load the checkpoints. I'm gonna set this max to keep argument to none so that we keep all the checkpoints. If you're running short of space, you can use this argument to keep last n checkpoints instead, then the rest will be removed. Now I'm going to check whether we have already saved any checkpoints or not. And if we do have checkpoints already in this directory, we should continue training from there. So I'm going to resume training here, if a checkpoint exists. I'm just going to copy the code block here, you don't have to memorize this. Once we load a checkpoint, we should restore the last global iteration number we had so that we can continue from the last iteration instead of starting from one. I'm gonna change this one to initial step so that this for loop will continue from the last checkpoint instead of starting from iteration number one. Now we can save checkpoints every once in a while. I'm going to save it here every time we do validation, but it's not a must. You can save it whenever you want. Let's use OS path join to concatenate the base directory and the file name for the checkpoints so that the path will be independent from the platform we're using and we won't have to worry about like forward or backward slashes. This function also inputs the global step number so that we'll know at what iteration a given checkpoint was saved. Let's print here to confirm that we have saved the model. And let's run this. Model saved. Okay, I'll cancel this here. Let's see if it continues from the most recent checkpoint when we run the script again. There it is. It loaded parameters from the last checkpoint. Now let's see how to use TensorBoard. We're going to save the logs for TensorBoard here under this directory called logs. 
We'll create a summary writer that will write into this logs folder. And the first thing we'll write will be the computational graph. This will help us visualize the graph in TensorBoard. We can actually run this now to see how our graph looks like. But first, let's close the writer before we forget. I'm not sure if this has the correct indentation. Let's double check. Yes, it does. Okay, let's run this. This should be good enough to write the graph into the log file. We can cancel this right now and we can run TensorBoard. We need to point TensorBoard to the directory where we saved the logs. Now we can open a browser and navigate to the address we see in this terminal to, to go to TensorBoard. Here we have our graph. We have our model here. We can expand it to see what's inside. The data goes into the first dense layer, followed by a ReLU and a dropout layer, and the next dense layer, and so on. Then the outputs of the model are used to compute and optimize the loss, and also to calculate the performance metric. We can see what's inside each one of these blocks, and the reason these operations group together is that they're defined under the same variable scope. This variable scope, for example, corresponds to this block in TensorBoard. We can do much more with TensorBoard. For example, we can define placeholders for things we have printed in the terminal during training earlier. Streaming loss placeholder. Streaming accuracy placeholder. and validation accuracy placeholder. Now we can define a summary op to save the validation accuracy to the log file. The first argument is the name of the scalar and the second one is the placeholder that we'll feed later. The second argument here doesn't have to be a placeholder, it can be any type of TensorFlow operation. We can do the same thing for the training-related scalars. We can actually merge more than one scalar into one operation. Now let's find where we printed these on the terminal earlier. And let's write them also into the log file so that we can visualize them in TensorBoard. We'll run the summary ops that we just created here. And feed the values of the placeholders. We'll also write these into the log file using the writer that we defined earlier. And also we'll do the same thing to log the validation accuracy. Let's modify this piece of code to do so.
We're now ready to run this. Oh, we forgot to clear the checkpoints. It loaded the last checkpoint and the training finished before it started. That's what happened here right now. So let's clear the checkpoints and logs to make a fresh start. I'll fast forward this a little bit because it's going to be boring to wait. Now we can see how our logs look like in TensorBoard. We didn't actually have to wait until the training was complete. We could run TensorBoard in another terminal while the model was training too. Here we see our scalers in TensorBoard. The streaming accuracy went up, the loss went down as expected, and the validation accuracy also went up. We can adjust the strength of smoothing here. We can expand the charts, we can switch the y-axis to a logarithmic scale, we can scale the chart to fit, we can ignore the outliers and the chart scaling. There's a lot more we can do with TensorBoard such as visualizing images, plotting histograms, projecting features into three dimensions, and so on. But the features that you'll be using most of the time probably will be logging scalers and visualizing graphs as we did in this session. Alright, that's all for today. I'll see you in the next coding session where we'll be training our first convolutional neural network. I hope you liked this video. Subscribe for more videos and as always, thanks for watching, stay tuned and see you next time.